Seth Burrell here today with Monolith Studio Knives and I wanted to make a video today of a process we're going to experiment with um, making resin and wood handles. Um, I've seen this on the internet, I've seen some people do it, so I thought I'd try it, save some money. I might find myself in the long run that it's easier to buy the product, but I'm going to find out. So, I bought a paint pot for about 103 bucks online, and uh, it's a, basically a pressure pot that requires somewhere around um, 30 to 60 uh, pounds of pressure. And then I've got my uh, Illuminite two-part resin, which I purchased online. And then what I'm trying to make are scales or blocks, which will be cut into scales, which will look like this product, which is called shock wood. Anyways, so I'm going to experiment with my resin, my pot, some cherry burls, which I happen to have already cut and placed in my forms. So these are forms. They're made out of uh, this high performance nylon type stuff. I forget the name of the um, acronym. I've got some of this screwed together. Got a little tape on there just to seal it down. There's a screw holding each piece of wood in the block so that when the resin goes in that it does not fill up and float. Um, I put a flat bottom in the resin chamber so that it will remain flat because it's actually curved like and now I'm going to begin to mix the two parts of resin. I'm going to because this is the first time I'm ever doing this, I'm only going to try two of these forms. I have two of them set up. And I think they're about five. I took one of them. I actually have made four of these. And I took one of them because I don't want to do all four at once. And I measured out because I, I'm not a scientist or a math person. I just kind of do things by my sight and hand and all that. <clears throat> and so I... I put the form and I filled one of them with water and figured out basically that I need around 5.5 ounces with the volume of the wood is the rough. So I'm going to make roughly around 10, 11 ounces of resin mix in my cup, fill the two and put them in the pot. Um, so here we go. So when you're mixing the resin, um, it's pretty important, as I have been told, to maintain um, proper equal parts. And that's why it's important to have a graduated cylinder of some form for your measuring. Now, the way I'm doing it is probably not the way that some people would do it, but that's just the way life goes. I think some people are like, oh, well, I'd use two paper cups or whatever. I don't know. Everybody's got a different idea about how to do it. And so this is mine. And you don't have to follow it 100%, but... If I were you, I would follow the basics of it. Now, I've got some resin dye that I purchased. Now, it's a, it's a gel form. And we're going to see. So this requires, it's typically, we're going to put a little bit of this in there. 
and we're going to begin to mix the resin. And as we mix the resin, one of the things you want to do, and I actually I've already made a mistake that I've noticed, I should have mixed the resin uh, clear first, actually, and made sure that as, as I was mixing that resin, that I stirred it to the point where there's no cloudiness. Um, you want to make sure that when you're making your resin, and this is like true with epoxy glues and all that stuff, that when you're making your uh, compound of resin, your two parts, that they are very well and thoroughly mixed. And by putting the black in there first, I kind of... Let's kind of screw the pooch on that. I'm going to put just a touch more of the dye in there. And I would say, you know, like, don't wear your watch, don't wear your nice clothes, or have, like, you know, create a, a work area where you can make a mess, knock the thing over, spill it, and not freak out. It would be just like me as accident prone as I am, to uh, knock this whole thing over or blow this thing up and I don't know, whatever. I'm just kind of trying to be funny. But the reality is a little bit better preparation than I've done. I just got kind of carried away here wanting to Got the pressure pie, got the resin, and I've been waiting to do this for a long time. Now we've got our resin mix. We've got seven minutes of working time. That's not much. So uh, whatever you do, you want it's just like epoxy. You're going to want to get it done and get it done quickly. So we're going to fill. I'm going to make sure there's no... Nothing in there. And so what the pressure does, the pressure, the point of the pressure is uh, to actually um, work out the bubble. Um, like I said, the measuring process, it's really important. So I'm putting them in the pot now. And then I'm going to put the lid. This is the fancy dancy, crazy looking lid. And I'm going to put that on there. And it's very important that as you're putting the lid on, you fasten the lid um, appropriately. And that basically, the word appropriate means lots of pressure because um, it would be easy for this to not work based on a leak. Um, okay, let me bring our pressure. And we take the pressure up to, I'm going to take it up to, because I'm a scaredy cat, I'm going to take it up to around 25. Uh, I know some people will go like 60. I just, I'm not, you know, the, the pot that says that it doesn't, it's recommended for 50. I'm sure it can go farther. Um, that's just me. And so, two hours later, I'll open this and we'll see what we get. That's about the cure time before you can demold this stuff. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'll catch up with you in a little bit.
Okay, two hours later, here we are. So we'll let off the pressure. It's kind of like a magic trick. So we'll take the set the set screws out that were holding the wood blocks. We'll remove those and then we'll take one side of the mold apart. And you know when you're building your mold you may want to like design it so that it comes apart easy. I didn't think about when I was designing the molds, I, they've got a lot of screws on them. So you may come up with a better design. That, okay, so here's the mold. Weirdly, it did make some of these, some bubbles. So it's not 100% perfect, but also looks like it's a little thinner on this side than this side. So that probably means that the piece of wood that I put in the bottom is not actually level. So I'll have to double check. I'll have to go back and check that. So here's the second one. So you can see it's also, you know, when you're cutting your mold, it's probably important also to try and really make sure your joints are pretty tight because otherwise, the, it looks like the resin leaks down into the joints and as it leaks into the joints it's actually creating structural issues where it wants to bond with the mold itself so that's something to consider and like I said before this is my first attempt at this and I thought I'd but I thought I'd share the experience so there you go there's the product. And then of course, as you buff it and you know go through your sanding stages as a scale, you're gonna see that you're gonna end up with a really nice product. And this being cherry burl for us, you know, this will be really pretty. And what we did in this mold, actually, you can see is we actually put a small piece in the front and then another one in the middle to give this little separation, which I thought would might, might be fun. So you can kind of play around with different you know, um, you can configurations of your wood and whatnot and see what you like. And, you know, this one's done differently. It's just like a hump. And I think we have one that's all the way from one end to the other. But that's how it works. So good luck trying it. You know, you might find something out uh, that we didn't cover or that um, something new. But thanks. Bye-bye.